afternoon, everybody, and how are we all doing today? This is the Sunday Night Podding Shed Chat. Chance to chat to you guys, learn a bit about what you've been up to, talk about gardening and what we usually do on a Sunday. Hope everyone is well. Now, tonight, we're going to be talking about some of your money-saving techniques, which we'll come to in just a moment. First of all, we'll go, well, before that, sorry, we'll go for what I've been up to over this last week. But more importantly, what is happening out there? Is anybody actually watching? And straight away, yes, Bally Silly in Allotment Land. La, la, la. A Bally Cillian allotment man is out there. Good evening, Richard. Hope the toothache is better. I'll get on to that in a moment. Uh, Philly SPB, good evening to you. Adrian is out there. Good evening to you. Um, what else? Turbo Stream, good evening to you. Anna Jones, good evening to you. Hope you are well. Philly SPP, hello. Oh, no, I've already said to you, haven't I? Uh, Hargrave Gas, evening all. I'm looking forward to today's chat. Always good to get some money saving ideas. Uh, lovely to see you too. And thank you so much for joining the Supporters Club. Um, anybody else? Rebecca Hawkins, good evening to you. Hope you are well. Uh, Stuart Jackson, hello, Richard and the Veg Army. Hope everyone is well. Richard Golden is out there. Good evening to you. Um, Grow Veg UK, it's all go today. This season is upon us. Go, go, go. Indeed, it's exciting time, isn't it? I've got lots and lots to talk about. Uh, Kate Spratt, good evening to you. Hope you are well. And Chi Arnold, good evening to you. Lovely to see you. Ian Bernays is out there. Good evening to you. Margaret Peacock is also there. Um, uh, I think that brings us up to date please do keep leaving your comments below um uh, and say hello say whatever you've been up to and all the usual stuff that we go through uh keep an eye as we go out on throughout the show so what have i been up to over this last week and i think that, that let's get the elephant out of the room actually the toothache that i'm i'm suffering with at the moment i finished this show last Sunday. And while I was doing the show, I did have an occasional twinge of toothache, which started happening throughout the day. What I didn't understand is the Thursday before I'd seen a dentist for a checkup, so I knew everything was okay. But I kept getting this little bit of pain. Later on in the evening, when I finished the show, I got into bed and I couldn't sleep because the pain had got so bad. So um that lasted for two days. I saw the dentist on Tuesday. I saw the dentist twice on Tuesday, and he couldn't find anything wrong. But, of course, that left to a delay in uh, the podcast and uh, other things. So once I, again, I apologise for that. Uh, it's, it's, it's rare it happens. I was in a lot of pain, and uh, I still am. We don't know what's wrong, but the pain isn't as bad now, so uh, all good. So moving on to that, from that, let's get on with what I've been up to with the gardening. Now, yesterday I spent the day here at home, and it was a lovely day. It's been a lovely weekend, actually, weather-wise. certainly feels like spring is here. Last weekend, I started putting together what I called a patio garden, which is basically my patio area. I'm going to have lots and lots of pots on it, and that's where we're going to experiment and try and replicate a patio garden. But something I'm doing just outside this shed is a balcony garden, and I've put that together yesterday. After clearing the area, I had to cut back some hedges, trim things up, tidy things up. And what I've done is I've erected a couple of shelves just outside of this wall. It's one quite tall, one about waist height. And on these, we're going to have pots on them. We're going to grow lettuce and salad leaves, all in a confined space of what you would call a balcony area. The only thing I've got to figure out is how to put a fence up as if it was a proper balcony. So it is a restricted space. Uh, today, I went down the allotment, continued with the spring tidy up. I know many of us are doing a lot of spring tidying up at the moment. So I went down there, cut the grass, streamed the grass areas back and getting prepared. In a couple of weeks time, it's my birthday and I've been asked what I want to do for my birthday. My answer to that is I want to spend the day on the allotment. And what we're going to do, I'm going to spend a day on my allotment on my birthday. And a lot of people who want to come and see me are going to come down to the allotment. And we're going to have a bit of an allotment party. But at the same time, they've all got to work. <laughs> That's my birthday sorted. So looking forward to that. 
And then uh, back at home, lots of seedlings pricked out and lots more seeds sown. Of course, you'll hear more about this on the podcast tomorrow. So over to you guys. What have you been up to in your own allotments and your own gardens? Uh, Dad has joined. Good evening to you. Hope you are well. Ian Beddoe's biggest saving I found this week is a 15 litre wine box for 12 euros. Uh, fantastic. Uh, Nicola, evening Richard and all. So blowy in Cornwall. It's beautiful weather here. I've actually got the shed door open just to enjoy the weather a bit more. Idaho Garden Girls joined. Good evening to you. Oracle. I've seen a picture Stuart Jackson had on of him and his wife sell for the charity. Well done, Stuart. Hope you are hitting the targets. Instead, Stuart, let us know how your gardens are, uh, how your targets are looking. Graham Arnold has joined. Good evening to you. Beatrice has joined. Good evening to you. Um, um, uh, oh, Adrian has not had a drink for 27 weeks. That's fantastic. Uh, this week, plant sale raised £183.50. Brings a running total to 712 so far this spring. As well as all seeds donated by one of our army, I've now been given free compost, which saves me loads of money. Fantastic. That's what I like to see. Um, what else have we got? Uh, I've been potting on most of the weekend. I think that's what a lot of us have been doing. Uh, well done, Stuart. Indeed, well done, Stuart. And we just open up the phone line. So if you do want to call in, 07307 135 174. Uh, Stuart says that that picture was his sister and sister-in-law selling cakes. Oh, yummy. Um, cake, cake. My wife made a nice cake today. I'm just struggling to eat a lot of things. Uh, Tobit Stream have been mostly my home garden this weekend, trimming an overgrown holly bush and mulching with the shreddings. Tobit Stream does like a good mulch. I'm just hearing Roxy bark outside and someone's gone shush, which I'm hoping is Amanda. Um, yeah, uh, Tobit Stream is like a person like myself, loves a good mulch. It's something I like to do a lot of, something I like to spend a lot of time is mulching up our beds. It does pay off. I, I do believe it pays off. And it's a money saving tip, but we'll save that one for a little bit later on. Uh, Oracle says, hat off to Stuart Jackson. Well done indeed. Uh, but he said, ran out of room, had to plant out swedes, scallions, peas, onions and shallots to make room for more seed sowing. Plenty of backups if the weather turns bad. Um, I've been getting a lot more plants going on into my greenhouse at the moment, actually, with the weather improving. Um, I, I think it's great to great to uh, continue this growing season and a, a greenhouse is always a very uh, very welcome item um, i've got one at home one on the allotment and i might be getting a second one down on the allotment that give me three greenhouses uh i grow growing in Brazil. i'm not sure what that is but we'll keep an eye on that i just like a, th a thick layer of mulch that's true indeed indeed uh, have you put the link up this week or is it just phone in? No, I will add the link right now. Uh, so if you do want to zap in and appear on screen, on screen, oh, hang on, that went wrong. Let me do that again. Uh, and appear on screen. Oh, it's been very slow tonight, I'm afraid. Control V. All right, we'll try it the hard way. There we go. Got it. Been a bit difficult to, to type things there. Uh, oh, Charles Richard says, I am growing carrots. Excellent. Excellent. What carrots are you growing? Any particular varieties? Uh, I've been painting more of the shed. Pot up to uh, SH mini greenhouses, slowly potting up potatoes and also roses in tubs. Collected 30, 30 litre of green waste compost, one pound per container, field fantastic fantastic sounds like you've been very very busy this weekend as well um uh digwell's joined just came in from the garden nearly forgot the time lol i tell you what with this sunshine it does make you forget the time it feels like it's been a long old day um today <laughs> i had a bit of a line this morning if i'm off 
I think this toothache's made me sleep for hours. I mean, I went two days without sleep, so not surprising. But I seem to be sleeping for hours, and I woke up late and then just been enjoying this weather. It's been great down on the allotment in this weather. Uh, Charles is growing big carrots. Excellent. Um, yeah, I, I've been really enjoying this weather this weekend with the sun shining, the, the sun blasting out, and just nice to be outside and enjoying the weather. Um, I don't think I've got a tan, though. I'm, I think I'm a bit too careful for that. Uh, I, I do find when the sun's like this, it just, just makes us all uh, so much happier, doesn't it? Uh, caught the sun yesterday, too, from Nicola. <laughs> I bet you did, with all that work you've been doing. Uh, Kate, some work on the allotment, doing the bean frames. Some at home, renovating a cold frame. Looking forward to a long weekend at the allotment. So many seeds to sow and beds to organise. Yes, long weekend next weekend. So much we can do. So looking forward to a long weekend next weekend. Um, and then I've got, for me, extra things. So I've got four days of work this week, long weekend, four days of work, and then I'm off for an entire week as well. Uh, so, yeah, fantastic, fantastic. Uh, loved the Easter baking this week on Digwell's um, YouTube channel. Some lovely looking biscuits. Uh, I did a few jobs at the allotment this week, including prep for parsnips and keeping on top of the weeds. I think keeping on top of the weeds is key at this time of year. There's a lot of weeds seems to be growing. Uh, Charles says he needs to grow basil. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Um, I've got basil growing somewhere. Just trying to think where it is at the moment. But basil is probably one of my favourite herbs. I've grown a lot of basil and it's got to be grown all year round. I do. Idaho says I do try to save money in a garden. Sometimes the cost is unavoidable, but in general, I resist spending money. I learned that seed companies often advertise special sales on the internet by them. Indeed, I agree with that. I I, I completely agree with that. And we'll, I think what we'll do is we'll start moving on to the main subject. But first of all, let's have a look at some of the photos that have been sent into the group this week uh so kate um this is another kate uh she has got herself a brand new allotment this week she's very excited been on the waiting list it's four all words if i remember correctly but she's excited to get there uh she's also been getting ready to get stuck in as you can see with this collection of books that she's got. Now, Kate, who is in the chat tonight, she has been busy building a new bed on her allotment. Um, and she shares a money-saving tip for making these fat balls for birds, just by adding lard, seeds and millworms and squeezing it all together. She's also been making these bean poles using hazel poles that she has obtained for free as well. Uh, painting a cold frame that she got off Facebook Marketplace. Um, oh, that's from last week, so that one should be there. And uh, finally, Steve shares this cure all. If you're upset, buy plants. Happy, buy plants. Just got paid, buy plants. Stressed, buy plants. So on and so on. Basically, the answer to everything is to buy plants. So please do keep sharing your photos. Love to see them in either the Facebook group. You can send them to me by email, richard at veggroundpodcast.co.uk or you can um, uh, send them to me via social media. But there's one person I'm sure likes to save money is this guy right here. Stuart, my friend. Yeah, oh. hello. Yeah, I do save money. I don't spend a lot if I can help it. Indeed, indeed. Um, oh, so yogurt pots, yogurt pots, the little ones for seeds, the big ones to cut out to make labels. Oh, OK. Yeah. So the big, you know, the big, the big pots of yogurt. If you take the top off, strip them down, easy labels. Milk cartons the same. I cut a milk carton up to make labels because I think my biggest expense is obviously compost. So, um. I try to save it as much money and everywhere else as I can. So like paper pots, plant labels made out of anything plastic, um, or even lollipop sticks, because you can reuse them. Yeah. Um, so well, you just get, you know, use your rubber and rub them off. So use them again. Yeah. The trouble I have with when I've used lollipop sticks in the past is I find they tend to go rotten or moldy quite quickly. Uh, so I don't tend to use 
wooden labels yeah. anymore. Now, I do use the plastic labels that you were talking about, like these, but I yeah. use them year after year. Just I get a magic sponge every year, yeah. wipe them all down, and then I can keep using them. Yeah, it's you know I'm, I I tend if I have to buy any, I tend to go to our friendly shop. You know, with it starts with a W. Yeah. Um, and at the end of the season, and they sell them off, you know, a hundred for fifty p or something. So it's great, you know. That's the sort of thing to watch out for. Um, yeah. So I did go in there today actually because I needed some canes, and my garden centre is a little bit expensive for canes. So I went into a, the big W yeah. and got two packs for a fiver. You know, twenty canes. So you just got to shop round, don't you? That's the trouble. I, I agree. I mean. I Talking of canes is one of the things I have on my list, funny enough, because mm. I was shocked when I went into a garden centre to buy bamboo canes a few years ago and how expensive they have got. I think they're, they're just a ridiculous yeah. amount now. Uh, the big W that you're talking about, you can save yeah. a lot of money, of course, by going there. But yeah, it is. Um, I, and I'm quite lucky because I, I live near a woodland, so I can go and with my secateurs or my little hand saw and get a bit of hazel if I need it. Um, I'm not saying everybody should do that, but um, as long as you're careful and you only take sort of two, two stalks from each plant, you'll be fine. Or each hazel tree. So don't take all from the same bush. That's what I say. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. I mean, it's interesting. Bamboo canes. My granddad, he actually planted a, bamboo cane area and he grew his own bamboo canes oh that's a good idea <laughs> he had quite a big garden to be fair mm. this area at the bottom i mean the bamboo canes now are spread everywhere into, including into the neighbors and it is very invasive so i wouldn't recommend it unless you can really contain it yeah i know i'm as you probably you're aware anyway i'm trying to put a shield down the bottom of my garden yeah. But I want to make it wildlife friendly as well as attractive. And I did think about canes, like um, bamboo, but they it does tend to spread where you don't want it to spread, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I agree. That's why I think Tabry is a good choice for that area. But that's yeah. a whole other Yeah, thing. I did. I No, I did think that was a cracking idea because it's, it, it, you know, you're getting crop off of it at the same time. Yeah. So, again, you're saving money. You're buying a hedge. But you're, you're also getting food. Yeah. Which also feeds uh, wildlife as well. Mm, yeah, well, hopefully it wouldn't feed them too much. But I just, I, just, I just want the animals to be able to get through, you know, the badger or the hedgehog. or I don't want to put a fence up no. and then have to get a hole in it. Yeah. You know, I'd rather put up a nice hedge or, a uh, you know, some nice climbers so that the animals can get in and out. So, yeah, yeah. Because, think... yeah. So, and the other thing is, slug pellets, as we all know, they're a no no. Mm -hmm. Go yeah. for, when you go for a walk, take a plastic bag with you, fill it up with a sheep, so the wool off the fence, and stick it in the plastic bag. And then when you bring it home, scatter it around your garden. Helps with the slugs. That's a good one. That's a very good one. So, so but the don't wash it. Yeah. yeah. The sheep's where you often find a barbed wire. Yeah, just just don't whatever you do, don't wash it because you're washing all the goodness out. Um, yeah. The lanolin, it's the lanolin I think that slugs don't like. So if yeah. you wash it, you're washing the lanolin out. Um, right. So yeah, and if you've like, at school, at school, I'm quite lucky at school. We got parents, one set of parents got alpacas, so I get a bag of alpaca wool every now and again. But that's not so effective because it's too soft. Yeah. So it's got to be quite coarse. So you want the stuff that the sheep, you know, they they rub them onto the onto the fence to get yeah. them rough bits out. So that's the bits you want to so go for a walk with a bag, put it in your pocket, collect it, and then put it around the garden. Interesting. Interesting. It's free, and it and it's you know eco friendly. Yeah. And it will biodegrade into your, into your soil. So if you got like me, got clay soil, it will help break the soil down. Yeah, that's uh, a good and that idea. was a Bob Flowerdew tip, not mine. I can't, I can't take credit. <laughs> Bob Flowerdew is well known for his money saving ideas, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, I won't, I won't give the other one about in the compost, but yeah, <coughs> yeah. 
You've probably heard that one before anyway. Yeah. Yeah. We all yeah so there's loads of things out there that you can, you can do to save money. Um, but it's, but talk to other gardeners. <coughs> so if you, you know, how many of us have got half packets of seeds? So yeah. if you want to, you know, talk to your neighbor on the allotment or talk to your neighbor and if your neighbor gardens as well. So if you want to share seeds or if you want a whole packet of runner bean seeds, go abs on them because you don't want the whole packet unless you've got a big allotment. Yeah. Yeah. So there's my money saves. That's got, that's got the money saving tips off to a start anyway. Indeed. Indeed. Hopefully we'll get a lot more as well coming on. Yeah. This show. Um, how is your? I know you put it up, but how is your uh, money um, generating for the brain tumor? System? Yeah, yeah, we're on seven hundred and twelve pound now. So we did one hundred and eighty three yesterday, which was quite good on a cold Saturday morning. Yeah. So that was really quite good. So yeah, and again, we're getting people bringing plants to us that you know because people are getting into their gardens now, splitting plants or growing too many like we all do and donating them. So it's even better. So it's mm. less work for me to do. Um, well, I say that most of the time it's, they come in bags or they come in mushroom trays. So I've got to put them on. Yeah. But I don't mind that. You know, if somebody's donating me a load of plants, I'm quite happy to put them out and put them on yeah. and then put them on the table. But it's it's getting that time. You know, it's you're beginning to see tomatoes out there and cucumbers. It's still a bit early for me for cucumbers, but people are asking for cucumbers and tomatoes. Yeah. Um, and when like somebody asked me for runner beans yesterday, I said, it's really a bit early. We're still getting frosts. You know, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, we've all done it in our, you know, when we started, we've all gone to the garden centre. Oh, they're beautiful. Let's get them, put them in the ground. And then the frost comes and kills them all. So I'm just trying to advise people as well. You know, don't go too fast. Because otherwise you are you are spending money you you know again in a week's time or a fortnight's time. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a very good point actually. No, don't waste money. Um, and buy quality, you know. Then you but, only spend it once. Yeah, well, there's. I, I was going to lead off with a, uh, a phrase I was going to use today, uh, mm. which is I like to be frugal but never be cheap. And what I yeah. mean by that is I'd sooner buy decent compost and you probably have yeah. the same story on the, the podcast bought cheap compost last year not for any other reason other than it was on my way home and yeah. i regretted it i wasted that yeah I, I think you're talking about the same same compost as i did from a supermarket yeah. a well-known german supermarket that's the one yeah <laughs> yeah i bought some and i ended up chucking it on the on the garden as um Soil improver because that's all it was good for. Yeah, yeah. So, it's but is it you? If I always think if you buy one, it's this a bit like the old thing about cutting wood. You measure twice, cut once. So you only buy it buy it once. So you buy that little bit of quality. Yeah. yeah. So the Absolutely. best you can afford. You know, the not everybody can afford. can afford six quid on a bag of compost, but if you can, go as close to the five pay mark as you can get. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I would argue yeah. it's best to spend six quid on a bag of compost. Mm. You may struggle to afford, but you get results and waste three quid on a bag of yeah. compost that doesn't give you results. So, uh, Alison yeah. says, well done on the fund. Thank you very much. Yeah, we will get there. We will get to two grand this year if it kills me. Excellent. <laughs> That's what I like to hear. And please do keep us yeah. posted. I will keep you posted. And I will. I'll let you get on with the show and then I'll, I'll go back to listening yeah, and watching. Yeah, uh, if you can't get any more ideas, then please let us know. I will type them in. Fantastic. You, fantastic. Take care, Rich. Look after that tooth. Yeah, I'm doing my best. I'm doing my <laughs> best. <laughs> right. All right. Take care. Take care, buddy. All the best. Uh, Oracle says, I had to have one of my older generation Linda plants. Their spuds never get anything done on my own plot. I grew Linda a few years ago. I wasn't that impressed with them, though. I thought they were going to be good. I wasn't that impressed with them. Um, Adrian says, I saved money in my garden. I didn't spend anything in the garden. That's that's what we like to hear. Um, Turbo Stream. I nearly bought some ruby chard seeds this week, about £3.20 a pack. I decided to save the money. 
Um, yeah, charred seeds are quite expensive for the multicolored one because they became fashionable. To be honest, I like the different the green ones. They taste exactly the same, in my opinion. It's just the color that just makes them look a little bit brighter. Uh, Charles says, what are you growing tomorrow, Richard? Uh, tomorrow, I will be sowing. Um, what am I going to be sowing tomorrow? I'm not sure yet. You'll find out on the podcast tomorrow. Uh, what I, I tend to sow all my seeds on a Monday, so you'll find out about that. Uh, Ian Bellows is researching garden centres in Antigua, Antigua to, somewhere down on, down on the continent to visit tomorrow. Um, I know he's he, he's going to have trouble bringing stuff back from the continent. He's in the continent at the moment, so you're going to have stuff with Brexit. It's a difficult to bring anything back. Sean says, I like to spend money. I just don't have enough of it. I think that goes for everyone. Uh, I've recently been having Toby Calvary meals delivered to my allotment and their trays make lovely seed trays once you put a few holes in the bottom. That's a great idea, actually, using um, different things for seed trays. One of my favourite things to use is the panets that you buy fruit in in the supermarket. I think those trays, they've already got holes in the bottom. You fill them up with compost, scatter a few seeds on the top, and there you go. You've got great for uh, cut and come again salads. Um, just some great ideas there using seed trays. Uh, my garden shed up was an investment this year, but it's already saved me £45 on the Council Green Waste Collection. The shed up was £120. And you're only just starting the season off, so a good lot to carry on with. Andrew Norris is joined. Good evening to you. Hope you are well and right. Been using the same labels, clean and recycled for the past 30 years. Um and this is going and turbo stream. I use plastic labels, use pencil instead of marker pen. That's exactly what I do. I use pencil on these. So like um Digwell has sent me a pen that I'm testing at the moment, um, which seems to be pretty good as well. It's a bit more permanent, but easier to use than a pencil. But it also rubs off quite easily with a magic eraser. Uh, again, I've been using these plastic labels for years, and I, in, unless they break, I keep using them. The no-no slug pellets were banned in the UK last week. Indeed, they were. Yes, the metal hydrite or something it was. Although the iron ferric ones, I believe, are still usable. Uh, Chi, I find religiously putting things away you're not using in the shed or garage extends their life to save money. Canes, watering cans, pots, etc. as the weather doesn't damage them. That's actually a very, very good... Um, cost saving look after your tools look after your equipment and it'll last you a lot longer very good one there i've got to say i like that uh ask for the apacapo bedding as it doesn't have to waste to use That's what stuart was saying earlier uh better keeping a pet sheep then you get all when then when you get the grass cut wool and free poo yeah yeah yeah, just I don't know how expensive it is to buy a sheep to keep on the garden. She says we have a seed library in our local park. Someone fitted a box on stilts with do a door. People put books and seeds in there, and we do swap seeds. That's a great idea, isn't it? I've got to, I've got to come down your way and find this library because that sounds really interesting. Um, uh, seed swapping in, in the local park. I think that's a great idea. Allotments and places like that could do that a lot more as well. Um, I think I said that one. Charles is saying, what's your favourite herb? My favourite herb is probably basil. Um, it's not a perennial, but it is so delicious and so useful. Chard always looks amazing. How do you cook it? So I like to use chard. What I like to do, I'll, um, I tend to use the leafy bits, like, a bit like spinach. It doesn't wilt down as much as spinach, but I basically use the leafy bits of, as spinach. And then the, the harder stem, I use that as almost in salads as a full bit of crunch or sometimes in place of celery. Uh, so many things you can do with chard, but just think, treat, treat it a bit like spinach and you can't go far wrong. Just throw in the LD compost in four-way grow-off. Very good so far. Decent pH, MP and K. Um... You, yeah, I think it was you that's that's the one I, I had bad a lot of trouble with last year. Nothing grew in it, but I think it was you that said different batches improve different qualities. So keep an eye on it. 
The compost I bought in January sales, 16 litre was 8.99 Westland Smith slow release fertilizer, six months feed. I bought for one pound a bag, bought 116, should keep me going for a while. Now that is a money saving tip actually. When the sales are on, bulk buy. That's something I try and do a lot of as well. Bulk buy when the sales are in. And I think um Stuart hinted at that when the the, the shop with a W well, Wilkinson's towards the end of the season they sell off a lot of their stuff quite cheap and I bought a hundred packs of their plastic labels for ten p. Uh, Garden centres also do it as well. Come September they tend to sell off a lot of their stuff cheap. Um, I don't like to spend money, but happy to receive donations and gifts. My brother gave me some green stalk garden towers. I love them. Um, yeah, I mean. Gifts are always great. I, I, I got, I get given a lot of things. Some of it does end up being a bit useless, but uh, I do like gifts are always good, um, and they always get find a use somewhere. Roxy wants to play. Obviously, you can hear her. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Also, besides Facebook Marketplace, we have online auction companies. People take unneeded, unwanted items to a company to auction. Often, the tomato cages, garden tools, pots, bags of soil, compost. Yes, uh, there's obviously eBay. That's a a place uh, a few years ago, many years ago, actually, before I moved into this house. I had a bit of an obsession with the old tools, and I scoured eBay looking for the old tools, and I got. A collection of I've got a um, like a plow, a hand pushed plow, um, a soil, a turf cutter, and potato a fork, tools like that, which uh, I think looks stunning and absolutely beautiful. The only trouble is <laughs> they take up space, they don't always get used for what they're meant to be used. But again, um, eBay is great for that. Uh, car boots also. Car boots a good place to go looking for second-hand tools. I've got to admit, some of my favourite tools have came from a car boot. So some of these knives and um, hoes and rakes and forks, because I prefer the wooden handle ones, I, I find those are better than that. I collect mushroom trays to sort plant pots in, and it's great for get growing. In another thing is meat poly trays for leeks. Yeah, I got one just there. That's great for starting links in as well. Um, and the mushroom trays, the plastic mushroom trays, they are great for transporting stuff around like that as well, keeping your plot pots in. Uh, if you cannot use slug pellets, how can you kill them? Bear that thought in mind because next week we're going to be talking about pest control. So we'll save that for next week. Uh, no need to keep writing on plant labels. Just do it once and use the same ones for the same plant every year. That's a good idea as well. Uh, I didn't think of that. I always, I mean, I always write the dates on them, but I start just writing a number and keeping a log of it. It doesn't really work for me, but I keep a spreadsheet with a number correlating to what I've sown and what I've done what. Um, as a substitute for chard, I will use beetroot leaves instead. That's a good one, yeah. That's not, Actually, that's a money-saving tip right there. Beetroot. You can use the beetroot leaves, plus you get the beetroot. Um, so I, I've grown beetroot many times, and I love to use. You get two for one, as I call it, leaves and the beetroot. Uh, beetroot and chard are pretty much in the same family, I believe. So they are uh, pretty close. Uh, Andrew Knight says, now is the time to collect nettles as a substitute for chard and spinach, and it's free. You can also use nettles for making a plant feed as well. Just uh, get a load of nettles, pour it into water like we did with garlic, let it create like this nettle tea, and then there you go, you've got this beautiful plant feed, which is actually very good at building roots. Um What's Digwell saying? I read a good article in Gardening Witch last week that said that peat free compost has a usable life of three months at the most from the time it is bagged up. Well, I think I said last week, uh, and certainly on the podcast, what I'm doing is trialing um, peat free composts. I've got potatoes set up that I've got four, four pots of Charlotte potatoes with a different brand of peat free compost because i'm trying to bear in mind it's about cost saving at the moment i've gone for we got new horizon which is probably one of the most expensive brands but it's like the the top one supposedly um then i've gone to asda to get their compost and using that 
a and q and Wix to try them out and just see what works out the best. And I'm doing it with potatoes at the moment. We're going to be doing it with salad leaves and various other crops as we go on throughout this season as well. Uh, which Charles says, what is the best compost to buy? That's what we're going to find out. It's it's, uh, it's going to be a, an experiment to find out what is the best compost. What about the di diet, Sean? You won't be breaking seven times given them delivered from the plot. That's the um, uh, Toby Carvery. Um, I've got but when I lived alone, I used to would go to the Toby Carvery pretty much every night because it was I didn't have to buy food into my house and it worked cheaper than buying food into my house at the time. Um, can you buy green stalk grow towers in the UK? They may be under a different name, I'm not quite sure what they are. Uh, <coughs> Hello, I'm using our old waste recycle boxes to plant in. I've had a couple of lovely days to spend in the garden. Got through lots of seeds and compostes from Annis and planted out the rest of my spud. Fantastic. Old waste recycling boxes. They're good ones to use as well. I, I've got a few of those on the allotment. Again, this is the money saving tips. Um, right, I'm going to start. <laughs> I prepared this show to with a list of the money saving tips that I came up with and I uh, kind of got out, got away with all the comments and everything. So I, I'm going to pull it back. Now, when I was on the phone to Stuart, we were talking about bamboo canes. And I, I, as I said, I can't believe how expensive bamboo canes have got. And this got me thinking about what do we, what can we do instead or to get cheaper bamboo canes or in their place and as i said my granddad he used to grow bamboo he used to harvest a lot of that bamboo to make our own bamboos um that's not so easy to do now because obviously my granddad and grand have died and the properties a whole other conversation but growing bamboo was possibly one way to save it i tried well i have got some pots of bamboo growing here but it doesn't get thick enough to be anywhere near as useful. But what I have done on the allotment is I've grown a hazel tree, which I coppiced last year, and I've used those hazel um, branches to create my own hazel sticks. As we saw with Kate uh, um, in the photos earlier, using hazel sticks are fantastic, I think. And I think, personally, I think hazel just looks a little bit better than the bamboo canes. But when plants are small and you don't need quite so thick or tall uh, canes, what I found, we traditionally we would buy those green little sticks. They're quite thin. They're only about a foot or two tall. But again, I felt they were expensive from a garden centre. That's so why I instead did. I bought some barbecue skewers. These are Again, they're about the same sort of length, the same sort of thickness, but you can get a lot more for a lot less money. And I use those instead. They seem to work really well. Um, once, they're dead, once they've been used, they are pretty much rotten, is the only thing I would say, so they end up going in the bin. But they do um, barbecue sticks, barbecue skewers, the long ones are great. And then the wooden ones, can't think what they're made of, probably pine or something, but they're great for that instead. Uh, Stuart Jackson, at school we have an old slate which are cut into strips then the children write on them with chalk to sa so save any old slate tiles. Where my father-in-law um, uh, lives, we found a load of slate which is just found around that area. We looked at doing that same sort of thing. Uh, Learning how to cut slate is a bit of an art form, but I like that idea. If you can, if you live somewhere where you've got a slate naturally found in the ground and you can get slate eat cheap and free, fantastic. Uh, just get that. Uh, Digwell, have a look at my compost trial video. You will be shocked. I will watch it after this show and I'll, I'll, I'll let you know. <laughs> I, it wouldn't surprise me. Like I said, it's, it's quite surprising the difference. Uh, Mel Court peat free is great, but get the fibrous one as the final one doesn't have enough texture. You can see a massive difference with things rooting out and water retention. Yeah, Mel Court is the one I've heard a lot of good things about. I, I haven't been able to find it, so I haven't been able to try on it. But it's certainly one I've heard a lot of things. That and Dalefoot, but Dalefoot 
is very expensive, I've got to say. Uh, Peat-free compost, some of them just don't have a lot to live in them. They just add some homemade feed from the worms or banana juice, just pop banana skin in a jar and fill with water and leave for a couple of weeks, then add to the water the plants. Um, <sighs> Peat-free does seem of different qualities, it's got to, got to be said. But it's got to get, well, peat free is being banned. Peat is being banned, so it's got to get better. And the only way it's going to get better is by buying the decent stuff. Stuart's made over a thousand paper pots this year. How much have I saved? Probably about a thousand pounds then, I think. I don't know how much pots are anymore. I, I tend to, well, actually, that's, that brings me up to a, another one pots. So <laughs> I've been sorting out a lot of pots lately because I have a huge, huge collection of these plastic pots. And I don't never buy plastic pots. What I do when I buy, if I buy a plant, I of course keep hold of that pot because I know it will come into use. But some of our garden centres near us, they have these big boxes outside in their car park. And they tell people to either leave their old pots in there for others to use. And you go along and take a few pots. So I don't buy pots. Instead, I just use those. And again, on Marketplace, which is quite a key thing at the moment, you can often see people giving away uh, these plastic pots when they've had a good clear out. Um, so another money saving tip. Have a, if your garden centre doesn't do it, have a word with them and say, can they start a bin for collecting old plastic pots? Or you can go down the Stuart Jackson route and make the paper pots that he does a lot. Uh, has anyone used leaf mould to start off seedlings as a replacement for shop compost? I've never used leaf mould for that, but I've heard it is possible. I'm always worried about doing it, but it's something I've got to look at doing. Alison, I use supermarket bags and old recycling bags for potatoes, yogurt pots for seeds, mushroom trays for holding pots, shred all waste paper and card and to add to the compost bin. Yes, yes. Now, composting is actually on my list as well, because I think one of the biggest expenses that I think many of us have is the price of compost. And the while we, when we buy in bags of compost, there is, it's got to be said that we buy it for a reason because, well, we need it, obviously, but also it's a, um, it's, it's, it's not likely to sprout any weeds in theory. Um, when you use your own compost, there is a chance it could sprout weed. So I tend not to use my own compost if I'm going to be growing for seeds. I, I prefer to use seed sowing compost. But certainly on my beds, I will try and use my own homemade compost. And making homemade compost is an art form in itself. Many of you will know I have this a technique where everything that I'm going to compost gets chopped up. I run over it with a lawnmower. It all gets chopped up nice and small, and that produces a really good quality compost. So um, making your own compost is possibly one of the best ways to save money, compost being one of the biggest uh, things that we spend money on. And even better, if you're struggling for space, get yourself a wormery as well. You add all your kitchen waste to it, which reduces the amount of waste going to landfill. The, the worms, they produce this liquid plant feed, so you're saving money on your plant feed as well. You do produce a lot of it, and you get compost as well. Win, win, win. Um, oh, cracking. There's a lot of comments coming in at the moment. Well, let's have a look. Uh, Kate Spratt, I have a wormery. It's coming along nicely for compost using kitchen scraps. The worm tea juice from the bottom makes a great feed. It's my first year with it, so I'll see how it goes. I've had my wormery for years, and it's one of the best things I ever got. Um, Stuart Jackson, if you have moles anywhere near you, collect the soil from the molehill. It's great for seeds or mix it with compost. Indeed, I have heard that, and I've heard a lot of um, a lot of people swear by this technique. Um, I've, 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 I chatted to a guy who called himself the mole catcher but was trying to put himself out of work, and what he didn't know about moles wasn't worth knowing. But he also confirmed that it's quite sterile. Uh, Mel Court came low in the witch trial, but they said, as we know with peat free, every bag is different. So it may be better next time we try to test it. Yeah, yeah. This is what we're finding is there's so much variation. Um, 
in so much variation in the quality of compost that it, it's especially peat free it's hard to judge it i'm still using very old c cell modules i did purchase a few of the silicon ones and also the rubber ones you mentioned on the previous show i haven't used it so cannot report on pre on performance yeah i mean i've got old seal cell modules as well i use them and use them until they are falling apart uh, if you're talking about compost, I'd really like to know how I can speed up the process. That'll be a future podcast. We may discuss it on this as well, actually. It'll be a, a good subject. I have about six ton of horse manure on my farm and more than wood chip trees that need to be felled. Excellent. Uh, from Nicola. And wood chips have also have many uses, including making compost paths with water holding in the bottom of beds. Yes. Now, my, my council sometimes get a delivery of wood chips, which are the when they cut down trees or have to chop up cheese, they do it to deliver it to our allotment, and it makes great for paths. It's free, but also adding to the compost, <coughs> mulches around your trees as well. Fantastic for so many uses. If you are chopping down trees, don't and you have a shredder, then highly recommend using that. Now, before I carry on, I've got a video came in from Tarday Stream, with uh, all to do with saving money as well. Let's have a quick look at this. Well, this is my budget coal frame. So I made this out of a pallet. Uh, the sides are made from pallet wood. The cover, the actual cover frame is made from a fence panel some of the fence panel laths and then the hoops are made from a Wilco small greenhouse which the plastic cover failed on it so I decided to screw them to the frame and then the actual cover is a plastic um, bin liner that we used to use for green waste in Birmingham until they put woody bins in and this next photo is my outdoor seed bed which I've talked about before so once again the sides are made from some pallets and the green cover is from an old uh, plastic cloche I think it was. So what I did this morning when I went to the allotment, I drilled some, some drills. Um, I previously sorted the soil out and, and fluffed it all up and got it all the weeds out. So I put my drills in, sowed a load of seeds in the, each drill and then I covered them over and tamp them down with a piece of wood and then put the lid back on so hopefully all those seeds will germinate and then I can print them out and transfer, probably thin them out first and then print, uh, thin them out uh, I think I'd save some onions and, and leeks and stuff so they can stay in there for a, a bit and then I'll transfer them and I've also, while I was at the allotment today I decided I would prep the soil for my parsnips so this year I'm doing it slightly differently so I've actually drilled four slots with the, with the fork. So what I did, I put the fork into the soil and basically loosened the soil right down to the end of the tines. And then um, I've got some loose mould and I've sprinkled that into the hole to really to break the soil to give the parsnips a chance to go down. So what I'll do at Easter, I'll then sow the parsnips at Easter under a fleece. So that is what I've been doing today on the allotment. And then one last photo of a little, I think it's a bulb actually. I'd say I bought a packet of bulbs from Wilco's. And this is one of the ones that came out. Obviously it's a yellow flower, not sure what sort it is. And then one last final shot of the allotment. Quite a nice day, but it was chilly. Yeah, so that was all my jobs for the week. Fantastic, fantastic. What a, a lovely little setup. I like the fact that you use pallets as well. I think I built uh, on my first, when I first took on my allotment, I built all the beds out of pallets. And there's still a lot of pallet beds, as I call them, left down there. They have rotted after a while, of course. And they are a bit difficult to um, to keep fixing together. But pallet would be cheap, well, free, to be honest. Bit of work di dismantling it. But it's free. It's free, isn't it, at the end of the day? Pallet wood is fantastic for the fact it is free. Um, I have, as you know, moved on to some thicker wood, and I'm building beds out of that. But free, you can't 
it costs money for that. It's free. Um, while I remember quickly as well before we carry on, if you are enjoying this live show, I know it's a bit of a struggle with my tooth, but if you are enjoying this live show, please do give us a thumbs up, please do give us a like, please do give us a follow, please do give us a subscribe um, and everything else that goes with it. And don't forget to click the notification bell uh, to um, so you get notified when we go live. Thank you very much. Uh, Charles is asking, what is my favourite garden bird? My favourite garden bird is probably a bit of a, a different one uh, than, than what you might expect, but it's the sparrowhawk. Um, I think they're beautiful looking birds, and I see them flying around here every now and then. They're just, just stunning looking birds. Um, what have we got? Uh, what else have we got? Stuart Jackson, Miracle Grow Peat Free. Looks amazing, but it's £7 a 40 litre bag. So the price puts me off from buying it. I saw that as well, actually. But it's a case that we've got to think about these sort of things. You know, if it's £7 and it works, you get more than what you pay for in the end result. It's got to be worth it. Tony Stream says, I bought a pack of recycled seed cell trays this week in a cell. More to save space than money. Yeah. I mean, in the sales, it's all building up and building up to keep saving money. Um, again, sometimes you end up with too much stuff you don't know what to do with. In my case, that is. Silicon baking molds can be used as seed trays. I've also seen, that's a good idea, yes, using the silicon baking molds as seed trays. But I've also seen people using like muffin tins to mark out where they're going to plant various seeds and plants in their garden as well. Um, that's a good idea. Uh, I don't, I love to see how other gardeners reuse and repurpose things. Indeed, from that Virgil from Tybo stream with great ideas building these uh, cold frames and stuff from recycled materials. Stuart, an idea that I did this winter was line my greenhouse with bubble wrap, which means I have only the put the heat on a hand four times. Saving money again, also sell your extra plants, which could pay for next year's seeds. Yes, another way to bring in money. Say, sell your plants. Um, if you have excess plants, look at swapping your plants as well, doing a plant swap. Um, something... We, we should think about doing plant swapping um and what else have we what else was my other idea uh swapping prunings as well so if you take a cut in uh to get extra plants um I'm trying to think what can we use an example rosemary very good plant to take a cut in from uh roots easily and you end up with more plants I work in a food industry. I'm lucky to have access to buckets, jerry cans, and drums used for ingredients. These are really used for various jobs in the garden. Yes, yes. I mean, you all know about the industrial IBC containers. Great, a thousand liters used as rainwater butts. Which have I mentioned the water butts on my? I haven't yet. No water butts. Everybody knows I'm very keen to save as much water as possible. Uh, I have one, how many is it now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen water butts in my garden now. And I try and save as much rainwater as I possibly can because that's saving money. All my rainwater, all my water butts are full. And that just means I've got more money or less need for the water that comes off our uh, pump, pump to our house. I haven't got to spend that, spend, spend that money. I usually just use it out of the water parts to water my car, uh, water my plants, water my garden, and to wash my cars. So water parts. And if you can't get water parts, look on Marketplace. And they're quite often people giving them away for free on there. I saw one earlier today that I was looking at and thought, I could grab that. Uh, Kevin, oh, hello. I forgot to uh, say yes, I could do with that video that you were going to send. Send it for us for next week. What would you suggest we put under a large netted frame? I was thinking about salad stuff. Um, when you say large netted, I was you could I would go for cabbages and brassicas um, would be probably better under a large net. You protect them from the birds a bit. Uh, in my eyes. The cells I brought were 20 per tray so I can transport them on my bike to the plot, less saving diesel in my camper van. Yes, price of diesel, price of fuel. 
don't get me started. Don't forget, you can plant in most items. We used an old drum kit last year for potatoes, and they are still good for this year. Drum kit, that's a great idea. I um, I think we had a conversation last week about uh, planting some trees out the front of my house, and um, Steve from C Steve's Seaside Allotment, he has he pot trees in the front of his house using metal bins. Well, I realised I've got an old empty beer keg out there, which I've, I wanted to make something with, and I was going to use it as a pot or a, a table or something. But now I'm thinking I can cut the top off and use that to grow a tree in. Um, use mushroom large trays as cloches. Not sure what they... The mushroom large trays. Oh, the big ones. Yeah, that's okay with you. Yeah. Um, Costa are happy to give out bags of coffee grounds. Yes, many coffee shops are happy to give out uh, bags of their coffee grounds because that can be useful. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I mean, I know there's not, not a debate whether it actually works, but people use them for a slug deterrent, put coffee grounds around their plants, and apparently the slugs don't like it. I, when I used it, I laid it on quite thick. I did notice the slugs and the snails and didn't like it. But another reason that you could use coffee grounds, chances are it's not got much caffeine in it anymore, but a, a coffee plant or a plant produces caffeine to inhibit um, weed seeds from germinating. It's a natural seed inhibitor. So if you do have trouble with weeds, you could add these coffee grounds. There may not be much caffeine in it, but it might help to stop your weeds from germinating. Of course, that's also going to stop your own seeds from germinating. So if you've got your plants growing and established, then it's fine to use coffee grounds. And Nicola's five IBC tanks and 10 water butts to Got to beat me. Got to beat me with my 15 water butts. She's got five ABCs. Uh, look after your soil. Healthy, strong growing plants suffer from less pests and diseases, so it saves you time and money. Yes, definitely look after your soil. That comes back to compost. Make your own compost and add as much to it as you can. Now, one other money-saving tip that I have is grow comfrey. Now, comfrey... Most people have heard of it if you have an allotment. It's an interesting plant. It's quite a big plant. It can be quite invasive, so get Bocking 14. But what you can do with comfrey, let it grow until it's about three foot tall and chop it down. Take all those leaves and pot them in water, and then you've got yourself, let, let it steep for a couple of weeks, but you've got yourself a tomato feed, a very strong plant Feed, which does great for fruiting plants. I also like to use the comfrey leaves as a bit of a mulch around my tomatoes for that same reason. So yes, comfrey is a big one that I've got to add in there. Um, Anna Jones is saying, buying. Have I missed something there? Um, apologies. Uh, metal water tanks make good planters or water containers. Quick, cheap when you compare to retail containers. <coughs> I've always wanted to get an old bath and plant into that because I think that will be quite an, a, an interesting and attractive one to do. Um, I just can't find a bath. I have to keep an eye on Facebook Marketplace, won't I? See if somebody is giving away a bath I can take down in the allotment to fill with compost. And uh, you grow some stuff in there. That being said, what I do have here, I've got it's a corner galvanized metal tray. I think it was meant for like uh, stock feeding or watering. I filled that up with ericaceous compost. And I've got blueberries in there. I've added a mulch as well. Um, and that is a very, very um, attractive, but if you can get hold of the containers for free, money saving tip. Uh, Bally Cillian done a very good clip on comfrey. Yes, he, I believe he did. Um, uh, we'll have to dig that out and have a look at it at some point again. Um, oh, I, I, had, I had more tips, more tips that I've got, or money saving tips that I've got. There was a, during the photos, Kate shared with us some bird fat balls that she was making using lard, seeds, mealworms. And that reminded me of a good tip that I always have. 
<coughs> you want to encourage some of those natural birds into your garden anyway, because they're going to help with the pest control, eating the slugs and snails. I, I, same's happened on the news there. I like to use some of our old plant seeds that I just mix in. And when they've gone out of date, they won't have too many, or I didn't particularly like them. I'll mix that in with my bird seed fix and let those the birds eat on those. Uh, that saves a bit more money, but also it helps with pest control. As you know, I don't use chemicals, don't really do much with pest control, which is what we're going to talk about next week, pest control, on Easter Sunday. We've, we have our Easter hunt as well. <sighs> excuse me, excuse me. Um, but, yeah, certainly encouraging nature and wildlife in is a very good way excuse me, to save money, I think, anyway. Buying cheap compost from the local council website is a huge money saver. Mine were less than half the price. Were less than half price that way. Yeah, I don't know where we get our council compost anymore because our, our if we they used to sell it at our, at our tip, but now we have to book a slot to go in there so, and i haven't when i was in there yesterday i can't say i saw they were selling any compost i'm gonna to have to look online and see where we can get some green waste compost from although a lot of people do say to be careful using the compost waste i, I, I i'll leave it up to everyone else to let me know what they found with that if it's any use or if it has caused problems so a lot of the theory being because so many gardens might have weed killer that goes into into the compost um, and you don't know what's gone into it is the, the theory saving your own seeds i save parsnip seeds every year saving seeds that's a good one actually not bought any in the last in my three years on the plot yes yeah, so saving seeds that's a very good money saving tip if you are able to save your seeds a bit of an art form to do it and then not only that your seeds then get better and better and adjusted to your growing conditions that they grow better and better on your own plot so i think that's definitely a very very good tip i also recommend go to a seed swap event and swap some seeds i went to mine back in february really good to, to, to go and do i met nicola at the same one a few years back as well uh, so yeah save your own seeds there is an art form to it, though. Um, it is awesome that you have allotments and councils and some sell compost and other garden items and amendments. Yeah, in fact, our allotment has an allotment shop. Uh, it's probably a good money-saving tip there as well. If your allotment has, you can join up to become a member of your allotment society. That often means you can use the allotment shop. You can save a lot of money in those places because they're not in it to make money. They can save a lot of money. Um, uh, another another money saving tip and this is slightly indulgent of me um, I, I run a supporters club as many of you know it goes to help me support this live show and the podcast it was originally set up for this podcast but I'm starting to do it for the live show and for that each month I charge £5 a month each month I send out six packets of seeds and they um they generally would cost you more than the five pound a month to buy those. I'm also negotiating discount codes with various suppliers as well. So I'm trying to get everybody who's a member more than their money's worth. So money saving tip of my own. And Stuart's just came in with that. Best money saving idea I've used is the Veg Growers Supporters Club. Uh, details on that and the veggrowerpodcast.co.uk. Uh, I've read that one. I've read that one. Um, ah, Chili Kate. Richard, are you going to Gardener's World at Beaulieu this year? I can't wait for this event. Yes, I am going. I'm going on the Friday. Unfortunately, I'm on call on the Saturday and Sunday, but I'm going on the Friday, the 29th of April. Cannot wait. It's going to be such a good show. Um, really enjoyed it last year and hoping this year is going to be an improvement. It, what, what I like, okay, Beaulieu is known for its... Uh, motor museum which you can go and see the cars of course uh Ian Meadows was there last week last year as well but what I also liked about this event and there's got another one in the autumn in Audley End House they've got gardens that you can go and have a look around as well and not the, the garden set up for the show the actual Beaulieu house and gardens 
and that's what I like about this show as well. You get to see that as well as the show. So, yeah, anybody else who is going to Bewley Gardens World Spring Fair, let me know what day you are going. I have a cattle trough 15 inch long that I bought when I was in London, lined with, with black pond liner and now it, and used as a raised pond. Utes loved it, brought it with me to Cornwall. Good idea, mate, but add a pond. This year, someone left a load of onion sets on the sharing bench. I gladly took some to grow. Yeah, I think these sharing benches are a good idea to save money as well, aren't they? Uh, I think there should be a lot more of it. And I, I do, I, on, the, uh, uh, on the on our website, I did say it's possible to share things. The trouble is the website, the forum on the website gets hit so badly with spam and difficult i'm thinking and it doesn't really get used on the form i'm thinking of getting rid of it but the facebook group tends to get used quite a bit and if anybody does want to share seeds and plants on there then please do feel free to use it for that Roxy might be coming in Are you coming in roxy uh, we are going on saturday i'm booked in for a garden tour too oh yes um so you will have either Saul or Lucy taking you on a wander around. Mention that you watch a live show and uh, uh, Bench Bear podcast, live show and podcast, and they'll probably have a good chat with you as well. Um, yeah, Can't, I'm really looking forward to this this one. Let's look at this. <laughs> um, right, more money saving tips. There must be more. There must be more. She's doing it. Roxy's crazy today i think she's looking she doesn't like me doing these live shows because she doesn't come in here she'll stand outside doesn't help actually my fence my neighbor's fence is, 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 we had some strong winds the other day and that fence has fallen down so she's i don't think she likes it when there's no fence and she can see into our neighbor's garden it, it creates a bit of a insecure area for her i guess but i think that sets her off on the barking so Bless her, bless her. Um, I, I, I think I've gone through everything on my list that I had for money saving tips. Uh, there's probably loads more, like there. there's bound to be loads more. The biggest one I've got to say, I think, is marketplace. You'd be amazed just what you can find on marketplace, and if you're very good, um, uh, with a bit of DIY, in fact, as we saw with Kate, um, she's painting up this, um mini greenhouse that she got on marketplace i've had i've had one similar to that which fell apart this i've had it for years so it fell apart got rid of it yesterday last year i bought a small one a cold frame style one but and it had that what do you call it um twin walled um twin walled plastic perspex twin wall perspex whatever it's called uh, as the windows on the sides and on the top and the two on the top it had basically it did survive the winter basically it fallen in and collapsed and i i was sort of thinking i could go and get some more twin walled perspex and refix that and carry it on but instead, what I figured I'm going to do is get some EnviroMesh and staple that to the top and use it as a cold frame from that perspective. We've got the greenhouses, so it's not like I need a cold frame in that set. I, I'm just, I like this idea because, again, it's reusing something that is so it's sort of broken but not quite. It's reducing the amount of stuff I'm throwing away, but it's also helping me out in many ways. Um my parsnips reseeded themselves last year. Do you think they will make a crop or will they just go to seed? They will. Parsnips are biannuals, so they. I think they will make a crop this year. If you leave them till next year, they will flower. Um, I think they'll be fine, of course. Um, that, they will be fine. Twimble par polycarbonate, that's the word that I was thinking of. Yeah. Uh, Turbo Stream also says to Idaho, my self-seeded parsnips I use to save seed from. So he does it himself, so he knows there. I'm going to have a swing of this again. Oh, uh, uh, um, I'm trying to think of any other money saving. I mean, the thing is, when, when we discuss this subject, there's so many good ideas and so many great ideas that people share. 
and sometimes it's it's very difficult. I think when you go on an allotment, you just realise how ingenuity uh, or inventive people can be when you really do see reusing and recycling at quite a scale on the allotment. So, um, you know, people have broken sheds and people will fix them and use them on their allotments. Uh, again, that's something I see a lot of marketplace, people giving away sheds that are a bit broken and people will take them and fix them up and add them into their allotments. I mean, why not? It's a free shed. Um, greenhouses. I know um, Richard Golden a while back, uh, he was here at the beginning. He was offering a couple of greenhouses that needed to be got rid of as well. Um, I don't know if he, he ever got rid of them. But quite often, if you are after a greenhouse, people will give them away. You may have to buy some new glass. You may have to dismantle the greenhouse. But quite often, it's very easy to come by and get a free greenhouse. <laughs> you might just have to wait your your turn. In fact, I think, I don't know if I said, I've been offered another greenhouse from, I want to say my granddad, technically my step-granddad which I'm thinking of pointing down on the allotment along with Grandad's Greenhouse, which will give me three greenhouses in total. Um, again, that's free, and I, I can't turn it down because it's a free item that I will use. I've just got to work out where it's going to go uh, if I'm allowed it down there as well. Uh, oh, there we go. Sorry, had to tip him. There you go. That's what I, what I was afraid of, as Richard said. He had to get rid of those greenhouses because... He's trying to give them away for free, and nobody took them, unfortunately. Uh, Terry King on YouTube takes recycling to the next level. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a uh, that's the thing. Recycling is what we have to do to save money. And Rebecca also says, I've seen lots of people use a window to make a cold frame. Yes, yeah, I've seen people use um, a car boot as a cold frame as well. In fact, on my allotment, somebody, I think he must work as a glazer or replacing windows. He's got a collection of windows that he's made into a greenhouse. It's quite clever, quite clever indeed. Good evening, Richard. Spent all day listening to various podcasts. Do you listening? Do you listen to anything whilst gardening? There's lots of podcasts, of course, lots of gardening podcasts and um, the archers. Um, uh, and LBC is if I've run out of podcasts, LBC the radio, uh, while well, gardening. I like the conversation sometimes. Uh, what have we got here? Stuart Jackson, as most of you know, I use flower buckets to collect water in the, in the winter. Supermarkets just pop them in the skip, so why not ask? I have grown carrots in them. There you go, that's another good idea. The bucket flower buckets, I've got quite a few of those. They're good for growing carrots in. Uh, but what I, I also recommend in order to extend, if you've got lots of water butts, in order to expend, extend the amount of water you can get, when your water butts are full, or even when they're not full, fill up all your watering cans or all your buckets as well so that you've always got the maximum amount of space in your water butts. So if it does rain, they can catch as much as possible. Uh, what have we got? What have we got? Alison, I've seen a video on YouTube about making planting bags from reed resistant membrane. May give this a go. Yeah, I've seen that as well. So, the, the, the idea being you get this weed membrane and you sew it together to make a bag. I, I couldn't do it myself. Um, but that being said, I'm, I'm just I, I, just a thought here. If you buy some compost and you're left with that bag, <coughs> excuse me, you can use that bag for growing com for growing potatoes in as well. Um, um, it, it's very good, very good if you. I don't like using plastic in the garden so much, but it's a good reusable item there. I think a pop bottles for cloches, cut in half, and then you get two. Yes, using old plastic bottles for cloches. I used to do that all the time. Um, when I was very, very, when I first started gardening, I always remember my uh, my cousin seeing me do it and was like, oh, that's a good idea. Uh, it amazing how you these things stick in your mind. Uh, Tyro Stream says he listens to a bloke in Littlehampton when I garden. Not sure who he is. Well, let me know who he is. I'm in Littlehampton as well, funny enough. 
Uh, uh, I think we're getting lots of money saving ideas. I think the biggest thing I'm taking away from tonight is that a lot of people seem to echo my thoughts that the biggest expense is compost. And what we've got to do to try and beat that is make as much compost as we possibly can, make it as quick as we can, and compost absolutely everything that we have. Um, that's what I say. I find my garden saves me money. Gifts from my garden are always appreciated. I make a lot of chutneys and jams, etc., for people. Well, that is a money saving tip right there, actually, because I have when I when I had lots of, more time on my hand, I and I first took on allotment tearing, uh, a bit younger then as well. Uh, I would make lots and lots of chutneys out of the stuff I grew. Um, I'm trying to find a time to do a lot more of it this year, but we made rhubarb chutney, courgette chutney, um, jams, jellies, and everything like that. And we, we, we stored them into just our old jam jars, washed out jam jars. They get money saving tip there save your old jam jars and use them to make your own chutneys and jams. And I would give those away as Christmas presents. And they were always very well received. In fact, many people really liked them. Um, I've just got to make more of them. I've got, to, I've got to really crack on with that stuff this year. It's just, like I say, it's finding the time at the moment I struggle with. Here's a plastic milk bottle as a small watering can. Use the needle to make holes in the top. I've heard that tip as well. Um, Turbo, is that the same man who puts a podcast out on a Monday? Yeah, I think. Who is he? Who is he? Oh, sorry, he's from Worthing. Uh, Worthing. Who is? I shouldn't say that, should I? You're coming in. Wow. My dogs came in and she's out again. I was going to pick her up and show you because she's got big. You probably haven't seen us for a while, have we? Um, <laughs> I will call that the fellow. Indeed, indeed. That's, that's that. So, at the moment, I think the reason I, I've been going down this route lately, as you know, the cost of living crisis is causing a lot of people a lot of stress. And I'm trying to sort of tailor towards that to a certain extent. And this is why I'm looking for ways that everybody can save money. And I think that's it's important. It's so important this day and age. And we, even if we weren't in a cost of living crisis, I do think that if we can save money, it's only better for us all in our gardens and our allotments. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, we've got just over 10 minutes to go of this show. Um, um, so if anybody has got any other really good ideas of, to save money, be great to hear. Vobes is on the missing list from what we, we from we said about he his back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's not here tonight, but I'll give him a call tomorrow. Uh, Jen's up and gone. Late to the party as usual. How are you feeling, Rich? I'm surviving. Is the word better than what I was? Just in a lot of pain, as I said. And dentist doesn't know what's wrong. I've had an X-ray, had a check, so we don't know what is wrong. Uh, if anybody does want to zap in, the link is in the comments. Of course, if you're watching in a Facebook group, you may not see uh, just what is um, uh, may not see these comments the way Facebook works sometimes. Um, Anna Jones says, "Best suggestion yet: get free advice from all the fantastic YouTube channels. Stacks better than books, magazines, and TV." And now I, I've got to say, this is. What I've always felt is a very interesting point. When you get read a book and it tells you how to grow a certain plant, that book is generally written from the person who's written it experience. And it may not always tally up with what you, your own scenario. So you may not have the same soil, for example. You may not have the same light. You may not have the same water. And this is what I find when you watch other YouTube channels or listen to other podcasts, and they have different ways of growing things. You can find what is closest to your own scenario and use that tip 
on your own gardens or use that method in your own gardens. And that tends to work out a lot better, I find, than what a book says. Um, I don't know if anybody else has noticed that. That's just saying I feel. Um, it always always is a, a good way, I think, to see what other people are doing, how other people grow things. Oh, starting to fire up again, this tooth. Um, yeah, I keep mushroom tubs to use as potting tubs for seeds. And these are big, like, ice cream containers, these mushroom tubs. Um, I, only reason I'm asked, so obviously, I don't buy mushrooms. Uh, at my age, I'm hard to buy present for us. So most of the family give me vouchers for my birthday, Christmas, etc. So that lets me buy what I need from the allotment, and they get a share of what I grow in return. We've forgotten probably the biggest money-saving tip. You know, we're going to be eating the food that we grow. That's going to save a lot of money. Well, save money, but you also get a higher quality food as well. Uh, so the sense of achievement in growing fresh produce repays all the efforts and cost, in my humble opinion. But it gets you out in the fitness as well, and it enjoys the show. Another money-saving tip. Grow plants which you can get multi-crops multi from. Beetroot leaf and the root, like we were talking about earlier. Um, and if you can grow interplanted plants as well, so you get several crops from that one bed, so you might radish where you've got your carrots as well. Ooh, radish, got to grow some carrot radish soon. It is snowing, big fat flakes, definitely is still winterish here, won't be setting plants up too soon. I'm just looking outside, no, still got sunshine here. I saved the wood ash from my log burner this year for the plot, that's a good trip as well, wood ash. Uh, good for your tomatoes. Um, used a lot in World War II, that was, believe it or not. But it has to be wood, no coal. The best homemade compost feed tea is the one made from weeds that are prolific in your area. That makes sense, because they're going to contain all that nutrients that they've stolen out of the ground. Um, I was just sort of thinking the cooch grass, make a, a compost tea out of that. If anybody wants some cooch grass, then please do feel free to come down to my allotment and take it. So much of it. So much of it. All right. Six minutes to go for this show. Next week, as I said, we're going to have uh, the, the, the main topic is going to be pest control. So I want your methods, your techniques of pest control. Please do share your photos, your videos and things like that to... Um, get a few ideas for that but we did it last year we had a bit of fun in the beginning we did a easter egg hunt as well so around behind me i'm going to hide lots of little eggs and uh, you're going to have to find them throughout the show as well i won't be able to eat them all because chocolate not good for your teeth not quite sickly as well after a while um but we'll find them on the show. You can't put a price on the friendships you make in the gardening world. That is true. You cannot put a price on friendships that you make in the gardening world. Um, I've made so many friends through gardening. And it's so, 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 it's so, gardening, I've got to say, I think gardening is such a good form of, I've got such a good hobby for so many reasons. Friendships being one of them. Uh, pest control, double barrel shotgun clip won't go down well. If it's if it's what you do, I have no problem with it. I know there'll be some people who don't like it, of course, but we're not here to judge. We're here to share all the methods and let people decide what that that they want to do. Uh, eggs that belly wouldn't fool anyone. <laughs> I don't actually eat much chocolate, believe it or not, but you are right. This belly wouldn't fool anyone. Uh, I'm overwintering some pepper plants. Less seeds to buy this year. Yeah, that's a good a good one. Right at the end, overwintering some plants. Chilies and peppers are very good. If you can keep them going over winter, you get earlier crops and you don't have to buy them next year. Um, I find it very satisfied, satisfying to pull pulverize the weeds and turn them into a fertilizer stew indeed and we've had some great ideas tonight some really great ideas on how to save money i think we're gonna 
we're going to take it on and carry it on going forward. I think it is um, it's important to keep trying to save money, as I said earlier. There's a lot of people who are really struggling to... The fact that they are debating whether to cook food or to heat themselves is just a, quite a scary uh, scenario. Um, but this is what we got to do, what we got to do. Got to do what we got to do. Uh, right, on the podcast tomorrow, obviously I've got the usual diary section where you will hear more about what I've been up to over this last week. But also I have got six of my favourite plants that are perennial but grow in pots and give you several crops throughout the season. It's a bit of a minefield. I haven't quite worked out the title, just the sort of theory. And it's six plot, six plants that I've chosen that I grow myself and absolutely love growing and do well in pots. So that's going out on coming out tomorrow night. Uh, it's pretty well written. It pretty much all scripted, got a bit more editing and a bit more recording to do, of course, but it should be out. I do apologise once again for the delay in this week's podcast and the podcast that went out being so uh, not to my usual standard. Don't forget to watch the compost comparison video at the Veg Ground Podcast. I will watch it tonight. I will um, jump in the bath and watch that uh, once I'm done. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, send me the no, I'll find it. I'll find it. Don't worry. Uh, use branches to make own rustic fencing plant supports. Uh, good idea. Good idea. That one. Um, sting and nettle soup. That's why I let them grow cheaper than spinach. Yeah, sting and that, that sting and nettle soup is another very good one. Um, I'm not eating it's quite tasty, isn't it? It's a weird once you get past the fact it's sting and nettles, it's quite tasty. And uh, right, well, as we start wrapping up, please don't forget to like, don't forget to give us a thumbs up, please don't forget to follow, please don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to click the bell notification to know when we go live. I know I've already said it, but I've got to say it again. And every time I say it, I do suddenly see a lot more people give us a thumbs up on my screen because I can I can see who's liked and who has done what. Uh, from here, believe it or not, with the, the setup that I've got here. Um, Oracle is saying, brilliant night, everyone. Thank you. Uh, Beatrice is saying, thanks, everyone. It's been good. It has been good to have this conversation, actually, and get a few ideas and look about saving our money, our hard-earned money. Right. I'm going to start wrapping this up. Like I say, on the podcast tomorrow... We have got the six plants that do well in six perennial plants that are great in pots. Um, next week, pest control, get your ideas, get them sent in. My email is richard at veggroundpodcast.co.uk. If you've got a video, wetransfer.com is the website to go to and send to my email address. Uh, you can send via social media to send find me in Vegground Podcast, etc, etc. Uh, I think that just about sums everything up. And there we go. Since saying, please do like and can see more people have given it a like and etc, etc. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, I think we're going to start wrapping this up for this evening. Thank you so much, everybody, for bearing with me with my tooth as well. Um, I do apologise. It's been such a, a difficult one, but we've got there. We've got there. Um, um, in a couple of weeks' time, we will get comp talk about composting as well. Um, anyway, that's it for this week. That's what I'm trying to say. You take care, guys. I'll see you all again next time.